Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 130 and most likely the very last one. I'll explain to you in a second. Today is day number 3133 is to signify that we are in a third edition. Today we'll have 130th video where we'll do the very last problem, very little, very last problem that you see in the book in the math section. Problem number 19 that appears on page number 324. Before we start problem number 19, which is, which is the last problem under the, under the heading of data analysis exercises, I want to quickly go over the order in which I did the problem. I did not do these problems in, in the order as they appear in the book from 1 through 19. Uh, they were a little mixed up. So here's what we did. Problem number 11 through 15, if you're looking for the solution to these problems, which deal with the pro concept of probability, those, are co those were covered on day number 101 through 115, day 3101 to 3115. Problem 6 through 10 deal with the permutation and combinations and those were covered on day number 3116 to 120. Then we did the three exercises that you find that you will find on page number 317, 318 and 319. Example 4.6.1, 4 4.6.2 and 4.6.3. We did those three on day number 121, 122 and 123. Day 3121 to 3123. Problem number 1 through 5 were done on day number 3124 through 127. And then finally, the last four problems, 16, 17, 18, and 19, 16 and 17 were done day before yesterday on day number 128. Yesterday we did day number, uh, problem number 18. And today, on day, day 3113, we'll do the very last problem. Do you understand? Let's keep going. Now, as I said, this could very well be the very last video in the series. And the reason I put it like that is because there are two exams at the, at the, end, of, at the end of the book. There are two actual exams. I'm not sure if I want to go through those questions or not. So if I decide to make videos on those, those two exams, then, then you'll see me again. Otherwise, this will probably be the very last one. If you found this series helpful and if you, if you, wish, if you think that uh, if you wish to work with me on a one-to-one -one basis, if you wish to hire my services as your tutor, you can always get hold of me. Here is my phone number, 1-800-808-PREP. Here is my email address, prepsat at aol.com. You can go to my website and send me an email from there. And I'll be more than happy to do whatever it is that I can to help you raise your score. Do you understand? For the, uh, for the math tutorial. Problem number 19. We are given family expenditures. We are given family expenditures for the two years, 2003 and 2004, in these categories, in these seven categories. Taxes. Taxes, mortgage, food, miscellaneous, auto, utilities, and finally savings. Make sure the book is in front of you because in the book it is not given as, given as, as as such. What you have in front of what we have in the exam, what you what you'll see in your book is is a bar chart. So instead of putting the bar chart on the blackboard, I found it easier to just put this thing. Let's look at the first problem. Well, not the first problem. There's only one problem here. The first part, part A. And part A will break it up into two parts, but before we do that, let me read the part A to you verbatim. Okay? And make sure the book is in front of you so that you can also read it to yourself. It says, in 2003, the family used a total of 49% of his gross annual income for two of the categories listed. What was the total amount of family's income used for those two same category in 2004? So here is a two-part job. First, we have to figure out in which two category in 2003 families spend almost half its income, 49% to be precise. Once they have located those two categories in 2003 where they spend 49% of their income, then our job is to find out how much money they spend the following year on the same category. Do you understand? So let's do first part first. So here is part A and the first part. The first part is in 2003, in 2003, which two categories? Which two categories comprised forty nine percent, or if you like, almost almost half 
of all the income. In which two categories the family ended up spending almost half their total income. Well let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Well here we see here we see 31. If you add 31 and 42 uh, 31 and 24 that's going to end up being 55%. We're looking for 49%. So, so there must be two categories where when added it comes up to exactly 49%. We just have to find those two categories. Obviously these numbers won't do the job. This is a very small number. Here is what we're looking at. Here we have savings. 25% of the income was spent on savings in 2003. And then here we find another one. 24% was spent on mortgage. And together they comprise 49% of the total expenditure. So that was part one. So the answer is, uh, in 2003, which two categories comprise 49% of the expenditure? The answer is mortgage and save, uh, mortgage and savings. Now the second part is for us to find out what was the total amount, actual dollar amount that was spent in 2004, in 2004, the following year, on the same two categories. So let's do that here. So this is part two. In 2004, as you can clearly see. As you can clearly see, mortgage was 27% of their total more total amount. 27% of their total amount was spent on mortgage, and the savings went down to 12%. 12 plus 27. Mortgage plus savings. 12. Oh, sorry, 27. Mortgage was 27. And the savings was 12%. 27 plus 10 would have been 37, so it's 39. So it's 39%. The question is 39% of what? Well, 39% of the total income. Their total income was $5,000 less. In 2004, the family's income was actually $5,000 less than what they had in, in, in 2003. It went down from $50,000 to $45,000. So 39%. So we need to find out 39% of 45000 that's what we need to figure out. Let's do it someplace here. We no longer need this thing, we already have it. So problem number 11 through 15, dealing with this concept of probability, were done on, on day number 101 to 115. 3101 to 3115. Even though, even though there are only five probability problems in, in, that, uh, in, in that category, and, but we spent 15, we, we have 15 lessons because we did quite a few problems that were extra. They were bonus, they were not in the book. And there, so there were some that were in other places in the book. Anyway, 39% of 45, the quickest, the simplest, the easiest way is to figure out the 40% of 45 first. So if we do, if we multiply 45 times 4, which is very easy, listen carefully. If you double the 45, we get 90. If you double it again, you get 180. 180. What does, it say? what does it tell us? It tells us that 40% of 45,000, 40% of 45,000 has to be 18,000. Yeah, of course, it has to be 18,000 because if you have 45,000, if you have 45,000, 10%, 10 is 4,500. If 10% is 4,500, if you multiply it by 4, you get 40%. And again, if you multiply 4,500 by 4, if we take 4,500 and if we double it, we get 9,000 and double it again, we get 18,000. So what does 18,000 represent? 18,000 represents 40%. We don't want 40%, we want, we want 39%. So what is 1%? What is 1% of 45,000? 45,000, 45, what is 1%? If you want to figure out 1% of any amount, just knock out the two zeros. So 1% is 450. So the answer that we're looking for is simply, the answer that we're looking for is simply 18,000, which is the 40%, which is the 40%, 18,000, which represents 40%, minus 4,000, or rather 450. 450, which represents 1%. 18,000 minus 500 would have been 17,500, so it's going to be 17,000, 550 because we're not subtracting 500 we're only subtracting 450. 17,550 represents 39 percent of the amount and that's the total amount that was spent in 2004 on these two categories. 27 percent, 12 percent comes out to be 
17,550. Let's do part two. One more time, permutations and combinations were those, that concept was covered in problem number six through 10, which we did from day number 116 to 120. And the three examples that you see there, example 4.6.1, say 4.6.2 and 4.6.3, they were covered on day number, it shouldn't say, but day number 3,121, 122 and 123. They appeared on page number 317, 318 and 319. There's two second part, second question rather. Or second part rather, part B. In part B it says, of the seven categories listed, there are seven categories listed here, of the seven categories listed, which category, which category has the greatest percent increase from 2003 to 2004, from 2003 to 2004, which category had the greatest percent increase in terms of a family's expenditure? Let's find out, shall we? Let's do it systematically. Keep in mind that lucky for us, lucky for us that the amount goes down from 50,000 to 45,000. You see the amount, had, 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 it been, uh, had, it be, had it been the other way around, if the amount had gone up, that would have made us that would have things made things complicated for us. Because if the amount, the whole amount is going up, if the total income is going up, then even it is possible that even in the situations where even though the percentage is going down from seven to six percent, but had this fifty thousand been here and forty five thousand been here, then we would have to worry about it because the actual amount might increase even though you're only spending six percent. But six percent of fifty thousand versus seven percent of forty five thousand, the actual amount that you spend on the, on the category might actually increase. But here we don't have to worry about such a such complication because the income itself is falling. So for example, for example, here's one example. In auto, we spend 7% of 50,000 in 2003, but only 6% of 45,000. It's a lower percentage with a lower amount. Obviously that is not the case. That's not where the family expenditure went up. Similarly, in savings, we spend 25% of 50000 versus 12% of 45000 Obviously, that expenditure did not go up. Uh, what else? Oh, here's another one. Taxes. There were 31% of our total income, 31% of 50000 was spent on taxes. The following year, we only spent 30% of 45000 It's a low, lower, lower percentage of the lower amount. That is not the case. So those three are ruled out. It has to be the other four. I'm going to erase some of this stuff here so that so that it is not as crowded because it's going to be too much. Let's erase all the all the stuff that we don't need. Okay. Well, we don't need part A either. Okay, let's get going then. So here in mortgage it goes from 24% to 27%. That's a difference of 3%. Now I realize that it's a silly thing to do that because it's not the same amount, it's not the same base. This is 24% of 50,000 and it is 27% of 45,000. These are different bases, but just, just to keep it simple right now, this is, this is, it doesn't make any sense, you understand? But let's just see what happens. This one goes up from seven to 11, that's a 4%. This goes from three to 10. The miscellaneous goes from three to 10, that's a difference of 7%. Again, and mathematically, it doesn't make sense, but it does give you some ideas what's going on. This is a very small increase. Going from 4% of 50,000 to 5% of 45,000, it might not be even increased, but even if it were increased, a very tiny one, that's, that's not it. This is not going to be it. Uh, it's, not, it's not going to be 3 or 4% when we're dealing with right here. You see, look, it goes from 3% 3, 3 of this amount to 10% 10 10 of that amount. That is our answer miscellaneous. Now, if they had actually asked us what it is, what is it in terms of actual percentage? What was the actual percentage increase in the amount of money spent on miscellaneous from 2003 to 2004? One more time. If they had asked us, they simply want us to identify the category. The category is miscellaneous and that's it. 
But if the problem had actually asked, what is the actual percentage increase in the amount of money that was spent for miscellaneous items from 2003 to 2004, then we would have, then we would have had to do the calculation, which we're going to do it right now regardless. Even though they're not asking for it, we're going to do it anyway, just to, just to see how much the increase was. Okay, so let's go going. Here is 3% of 50,000. 3% of 50,000. It goes from 3%. It goes from 3% of 50,000, 3% of 50,000, well, 1%, 1% would equal you knock out two zeros, 1% is 500, therefore 3% is going to be 1,500. They spent $1,500, they spent $1,500 in 2003, in 2003 on miscellaneous items. What did they spend in 2004? In 2004, even though the total amount that they spent is less, but it's a very huge increase, 10%. 10% of their income was spent, 10% of $45,000 was spent on miscellaneous item, 10% of 45,000 is 4,500. So instead of spending, instead of, instead of spending mere 1,500, Instead of spending mere 1500 they started spending 4500 on miscellaneous. That's triple the amount. That's, that's like going from $1 to $3. That's an increase, that's an increase of 200%. Increase of 200%. In other words, it tripled. And it's, it's not going to triple in any other categories. It's not going to triple because it's a very small increase, only 3% different. It's not going to triple the amount. Going from 7 to 11 is not going to triple the amount. This is what's tripling it, you see? Because the bases, bases are almost the same. 50,000, 45,000, they are almost the same. And you can see through just by visual inspection that it's going from 3 to 10. 3 to 9 is exactly 200%. And that's exactly what we have here because the base is different. So the answer is in which category have we had the greatest which category has the greatest percentage increase from 2000 to 2004 in terms of their annual expenditure? The answer is miscellaneous. The answer is miscellaneous. There you go. So in the event that I do not see you again, in the event that I decide not to make additional videos on the two exams in the back of the book, then in that case, uh, farewell to you. I wish you all the best on the exam. And I wish you the very best in, in, the, in whatever it is that you, choose to, that you choose to do in your life. And thank you again for spending time here with these lessons. Hopefully, our paths will cross again. Okay. Bye now. And as I said one more time, if you, if you wish to get hold of me, it's very easy. There is a toll-free number, 1-800-808-PREP. There is an email address, and you can find the email address also on my website, kashmaniprep.com. And there you will also find the telephone number. What telephone number is there? Okay. Bye now. Best of luck to you.